Lord, we gather before you today to offer up the spirit of the young man and godfather of commentary. Leafy is here. Twas not but a few months ago that Leafy is here came galloping, nay, cresting up over the hillside, riding bareback on a black stallion. <laughs> and he rode that stallion right up to the front gates of YouTube and he looked them square in the eye and he said, I reject the pussification of this platform. I reject the anti-bullying and harassment policies set forth and I will exist in the current landscape today despite what Ethan Klein may say. And but a moment later, with brevity and gravitas in their gaze, YouTube approached the young boy and grabbed him by the throat and said, Be gone, you foul devil. Be gone, you wretched beast. We blow the winds of God upon thee. Yeah. And just like that, the godfather of commentary was gone. Gone. Hello, great to see you. Welcome back to another episode of Leafy Is Here Got Banned on YouTube today. It feels like forever since I've done actual commentary about the commentary community specifically, but Leafy Is Here being banned on YouTube today, pretty big deal in that space. I would say he's widely considered like the godfather of the commentary community in the sense of like chatting shit, making jokes about other YouTubers and stuff over gameplay or whatever. And of course, that's kind of blown up into a much bigger thing that's gone in several different directions. But, you know, he was at the top of his game right as I was getting, I would say, back into YouTube in, in 2016, I guess. In fact, if you go back four years to 2016, my very first commentary video was called Leafy Is Here Makes How Much? Because <laughs> I was, at the time, just totally perplexed that some dude, you know, teenager could make these low rate videos in his basement and be getting, you know, 100 million plus views a month. It blew my mind. 111 uh, million views in the last 30 days. What you say? And it's kind of what brought me back into the fold of like wanting to make content on YouTube again outside of like, you know, the failed mission of trying to be YouTube's next John Mayer. <laughs> I remember having a moment of self-awareness at the time and I was like, man, maybe if I wasn't such a tryhard that radiates cringe and I cared a little bit less about the respect of my parents, uh, I could actually make something funny once in a while and people would enjoy it. And here we are four years later, I'm still a tryhard that radiates cringe, but once in a while, I can land a joke, yeah, so we're making progress. I'm not gonna jump into Leafy's history, most of you probably know who he is, but suffice it to say, back in 2016, in a weird way, he was part of the reason I took a chance on this style of content that I hadn't previously tried, that's kind of evolved into what I do now. Um, and he's currently trending on Twitter with like almost 40, almost 50,000 tweets, a lot of reactions from both sides of the fence, commentary community doing the old, oh my God, it's the end of the world, you're not allowed to have free speech and YouTube censoring everybody. And then the other side of the fence that hates Leafy, that's all kind of celebrating and popping champagne models that he finally got terminated. So I wanna talk a little bit about that. But in the spirit of YouTube terminating YouTube channels without a moment's notice, I'm trying to make a little bread while I can. So thank God today's sponsor, the very first person to ever sponsor my channel, very first company, Dollar Shave Club. Got Leon next door to talk about it, and for incentive, I included a very tasteful and sexy shower scene. Let's take a look. OG partners of this YouTube channel, Dollar Shave Club, have you covered from head to toe with all your male grooming needs? In the shower, in your mouth, under your arms, they have it all, but most importantly, they're gonna keep that beautiful face of yours looking radiant. Their Ultimate Shave Starter Set comes loaded with their executive razor handle and blades, as well as their Dr. Carver's Prep Scrub, Shave Butter, and Post Shave Dew. This makes for a luxurious experience that exfoliates, prevents ingrown hairs, and gives you a precise shave that leaves your skin feeling hydrated and cool. I'm in love with their bar soap, I'm just saying. It effervesces subtle notes of cedar wood in raw sexuality. By supporting them, you're helping support YouTubers like myself, and I'm very grateful for that. So for $5, you can get started with the Ultimate Shave Starter Set, as well as any other products to help up your game. Just head over to dollarshaveclub.com slash Leon Lush and tell your woman or your man to thank me later. So the past couple months have been weirdly nostalgic from early commentary days, 2015, 16, right when I started making commentary videos is right around the time Keemstar, Grade, and Leafy got into that huge 
backstabbing drama, right, where they teamed up and tried to cancel Keem, and it was wild. I think Ethan Klein was maybe involved too. I don't really remember. Uh, but Grade and Leafy would then go on to kind of drop off the face of the earth after making a bunch of money. Keemstar persisted because he is the most uncancelable person on the internet. Why am I still getting hate? But here we are again a couple months ago. Leafy comes back. He's posting videos again. Grade shows up again. He's like, all right, right, guys. Yeah, right. All right. So, right, I'm going to be posting videos again, right? For all you drama addicts out there. This is where I'll review the big drama that went on between H3H3 H3 Productions and Keemstar this past week or so, right? And then disappears again for like the second or third time. Then on top of all that, you have Ethan Klein dropping a content nuke on none other than Keemstar, who seems to be in his element when he's in the trenches of an online battlefield. So this is craziness is going on. People are losing sponsors. There's fallout all over the place. Meanwhile, Leafy is here like hates Ethan Klein and the, it's just it's a it's a lot to keep track of. Do you want to know who side I was on? <laughs> Neither of them. Cuz this drama sucked. <laughs> Grade A thinks it was shit, but I mean you could call any drama shit if you wanted to, but it certainly brings in the crowds time after time we come in and we chew up the drama, spit it out and move on to the next great story a week later and forget all about what happened just a few days ago. Uh I'm no exception. I'm a little less hands-on than I might have been a few years ago with this kind of stuff, but I certainly like to keep tabs on what's going on in the community. So to bring it back to this leafy ban, uh, admittedly, I was not like a big consumer of his content. I would pop in from time to time to see what he uploaded just out of curiosity to kind of see. And it was, you know, it was interesting. Like he started off by like just uploading videos where he's basically just dragging anyone who talks shit about him while he was gone. Essentially just re-uploading clips and adding very small pieces of commentary and it kind of developed from there. Sometimes he would go into like random videos about stock advice and talking about financial stuff, which I thought was very interesting. But more recently, I think and I think probably the reason that his account got terminated was like this, you know, this whole beef that he had with Pokimane, which I think started with Keemstar on Twitter and, you know, has since kind of spiraled into this whole dog piling on Pokimane uh, and, you know, these subsequent, I don't know, six, seven, eight videos that, that Leafy made about it that I think are the reason his, his channel got terminated. Leafy's YouTube account has been terminated due to multiple or severe violations of YouTube's policy prohibiting content designed to harass, bully, or threaten. Uh, that was a tweet from Rod Breslau, aka Slasher, who according to himself is the world's number one esports consultant and insider, competitive gaming leader, and internet culture savant. And nothing of value was lost. Good, they got rid of a racist. Get him up out of here. He was the last real YouTuber. He never made videos for the fans. He never acted like he didn't make videos for money. He was the realest one, the only one who told the truth. So you can see we have two very different sides of the coin here when it comes to the way people feel about Leafy, obviously a very polarizing character. Uh, I trying to understand like both sides. Pokimane actually chimed in here to clarify that she had nothing to do with Leafy's ban because she knew uh, she was gonna get asked a bunch, which I'm sure she did. Imagine making a five part series bullying Pokey and not being removed for bullying. So I don't know exactly what Leafy's angle here was, but in the last couple weeks with this whole thing going on with Pokimane getting dogpiled and the whole like war against the simps and the tier threes or whatever, <laughs> Like, Leafy's just made video after video about her. I haven't really watched any of them, but I did go to his page and just saw, like, Pokimane and every one of his thumbnails, like, five, six, seven, eight videos. And that's, like, literally him walking up to YouTube with a guillotine under his arm and just handing it to Susan and be like, you know what, just, just lop my head off. That's like textbook targeted harassment by YouTube standards. He has a large audience even after years of not uploading and it's no secret that I think YouTube has probably wanted his channel gone for a long time but just never really had the, you know, what they needed to make it happen. He's definitely not the type of content that YouTube likes to champion, that is for sure. Of course, Ethan Klein wasted no time in quote tweeting Slasher with the, I would, I would love, love to, see to see Leafy come back and try to exist in the landscape today. As that very viral clip from Ethan talking on his podcast about Leafy and then Leafy comes back and clearly had like a vendetta and included that clip at the end of every single one of his videos. And uh, Ethan wasted no time in trying to put the cherry on that cake after seeing Leafy get banned. So I don't know, dude, I'm not a, in, now you're talking about the whole conversation of like deplatforming, right? That's what people are worried about, the commentary community. You have the whole side of like normal YouTube, a lot of people that just hate Leafy because his content is, you know, criticism on borderline, whatever, uh, a little bit aggressive sometimes with some of the stuff. I definitely don't co-sign on some of the things Leafy does 
obviously like randomly out tweeting slurs on Twitter, like just to just to be edgy because he wants to. Sometimes it feels like he's trying a little bit too hard to be edgy, but part of me thinks that he really just doesn't give a shit and he gets joy out of seeing people get flustered or angry over, you know, a tweet or a video or something, which whatever. So I don't know at this point if there's been any like confirmation from YouTube, if this was like a manual review that took his channel down or if he got caught up in some AI, might get reviewed and might get reinstated. Anything could happen over the weekend, but since I started recording this video, it looks like Leafy was sleeping, but he woke up and created another Leafy is here channel that already has 43,000 subs. I, I would love, people saying, oh, Leafy, come back. I would love to see Leafy come back. Of course, this is the first thing. I don't know, man. It's interesting because, you know, Leafy's been using that green screen clip for like the entire time since he's been back to kind of subtly dig at Ethan and it drives Ethan nuts, I think. But I mean, the way it looks, unless he gets reinstated, I mean, clearly. We know how that went. So we had a live stream going too that said, free me, free Leafy, I'm sleeping, lol. And it looks like literally he's awake now, apparently, and he's re-uploading all the Pokemon videos three minutes ago, 29 minutes ago. So you have one side of the argument that's like, yay, a bully got terminated off YouTube. This is great, fantastic. Like the normal side of YouTube. You can kind of understand where they're coming from. Maybe you watch, you know, five, six videos where he's kind of just taking a shit all over Pokemon the whole time, um, you know, the other side would call it criticism, fair use, of course, and obviously I'm an advocate for those things. Um, Deplatforming, that's the big scare with a lot of these, a lot of the people in the commentary community like, oh, well, if Leafy, actually, let me see, John Scars put up a, John Scares put up a tweet, hold on a second. Even if you weren't a fan of his videos, Leafy's termination is very, very, very concerning. Leafy being terminated now means any of us could be next. That seems a little bit fear-mongering, John, don't you think? Like. <laughs> you can still make commentary on things on YouTube. You can still criticize things on YouTube. Maybe just don't make like six videos in a week about the same chick talking about her looks like a bunch of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to defend Pokimane. I don't know her personally. I don't really even know the situation that well. I'm sure she's she made an apology video recently for handling some situations poorly. Um, and certainly, I am fully fully uh, in support of criticism and being able to talk about other people on the internet because that's what I do for my living. But I do think there is a point. There is a right way and a wrong way to go about it. And I'm not saying I know what the right way is all the time by any means, but I think that making five or six videos in a row about this girl who is like one of the ambassadors of Twitch and YouTube is probably the wrong way to go about it if you're looking to keep your channel. And part of me thinks that Leafy just got his rocks off trying to see how far he could go before getting penalized because from what I understand, the dude's pretty financially set. He's talked about having some success in the market after making a shitload of money a couple years ago. So the money incentive might not be there. So he just kind of gets a hard on by trying to push the envelope as much as he can. And that's part of it that I think the commentary community kind of gravitates towards because anyone who came up in that community like I did years ago and has kind of seen the transition from you know, being able to do whatever you want, have fun, monetize it to where we are now, where it's just like pulling teeth to try to keep your shit monetized. Um, there's a part of you that like looks to somebody like Leafy that just doesn't give a fuck as like this last bastion of, uh, you know, wow, free speech or whatever, whatever the fuck you want to call it. He's like this symbol of the last YouTuber with a sizable audience uh, that hasn't taken the pill, so to speak, to try to stay monetized and play by YouTube's rules so they can run a business. And, you know, people look to that as like, oh, there's hope yet for YouTube. And then he gets terminated and everyone, uh, you know, in the commentary community and that kind of community that he helped create years ago feels like they just lost that last uh, beacon of hope that they could possibly run a business on YouTube without swallowing that pill <laughs> like most of us have to try and uh, stay monetized on this godforsaken website. I'm not sure if that made as much sense as it did in my head, but uh, that's just one perspective. Listen, I'm not co-signing the shit that Levy says or does or the videos he makes, um, but I typically am not excited to see people get terminated on YouTube unless they do something super egregious. Um, but I'm at the same time not surprised in this case. Leafy, bro, six videos, dog? Five, six, in like a week? Something like that, what the fuck are you doing? They're, YouTube's anti-harassment policy like got beefed up, beefed up last year and, and I quote, 
The policy now bans targeted harassment campaigns. The company told me that harassment on YouTube often doesn't come down to a single insult, instead it's a sustained effort over many videos. Under the new policy, YouTube will now take a more holistic view of what a creator is saying on their channel, even if individual videos don't necessarily cross the line. If they still contribute to the persecution of another person or creator, they're eligible for removal. So you could argue the semantics over what Leafy said in his videos. Was he really saying things that were harassing? I haven't watched probably over 90% of it. I popped in on one of them. Uh, I think he, he does talk about her looks in one of them though, but even if he's like, you know what I'm saying? This, this policy right here is grounds for removal because there's no question that Leafy making five or six videos on her caused her to get harassed. And certainly there's been some legitimate criticisms mixed in there, but as the internet always does, it takes things to the fucking 10th degree and uh, she's just been getting shit on. So YouTube, I mean, YouTube's doing what YouTube does, man, and they're trying to nip that shit in the butt, I guess. It's tough to say, man. I don't know, like, is, is it a slippery slope? Like, I guess so. It's been a slippery slope for years with YouTube kind of slowly and methodically kind of cracking down more and more on what you're allowed to say. Like, I get more frustrated without being able to just do stupid shit, like include something that's like mildly sexually suggestive or whatever. Um, but I, you know, I understand they obviously have to have policies that are like anti-bullying and shit. So listen, if you're gonna walk the line with that and make five, six videos on somebody in the same amount of time, like, yeah, this shit might happen. I don't think that's necessarily an assault on our ability to make videos that are legitimately criticizing other people, but there is a, a large gray area between legitimate criticism and just dogpiling the shit out of somebody over and over again for because you dislike them or something. I don't, there's a lot of area in between those things. So this whole John Scarce thing that we all need to be very, very scared. I mean, I don't think we need to be more scared than we already need to be. Like we already know about the censorship going on, the fucking advertiser run, multi-billionaire corporations. Like if you truly wanna be yourself and say whatever comes to your mind without the fear of facing any sort of consequence, if you're even slightly edgy, uh, you better do it on your own platform because you can't do it on these fucking ubiquitous social media platforms. And that's just unfortunately the reality of it. But I'm curious to see how the weekend goes. If this was an AI termination, will he have a chance to get his account back or is Leafy is here? The godfather of commentary actually terminated for good. Uh, we will see. We'll uh, get back to the jokes in the next one. Just wanted to drop a couple cents here real quick. Appreciate you guys. Hope you have a great rest of the week. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.